join with me to discover William B's wonderful world of trains, boats and planes. Hello, I'm William B and this is my wonderful world of trains, boats and planes. Once upon a time, the only way for people to get around was by walking, or on the back of a horse, or in some sort of contraption that was pulled by a horse. And then came along the steam engine, which is much faster than a horse, and much stronger than a horse too. The only real problem is that you have to get up really early to stoke the fire and build up the steam to get it going, four or five hours early. So that is why I also have a diesel powered engine. You fill it up with fuel just like a bus or a truck and once it's full it's ready to go. However it does use up ever such a lot of diesel and you do have to keep filling it up over and over again. So I also have this high speed super sleek non-stop electric train. The electric train come, electric comes from the power station though they, through the overhead cables that you can see above the train. So as long as there isn't a power cord it just keeps going and going and going and going. Or it would if it had enough track. Luckily I have something that does not need a track or a road because it can hover. My hovercraft has giant flat fans which push air underneath it and raise it above the ground. Or the sea, or a swamp, or pretty much anything. The engine then pushes it forwards. Hovercrafts are very impressive, but not as impressive as what lives in this little wood. Any ideas what you might be hiding there? It's a vertical jump off jet. It can go straight up in the air and straight down. It can turn around and round and when it's facing in the direction it was to go, it can go 700 miles per hour. When it comes home it can hide in the little wood and nobody knows it's there. That plane was made of technology and gizmos and all sorts of scientific inventions. But this one isn't. It's made from canvas, wood and glue. You have to fly it very carefully. <gasps> or else goes upside down. You need a much stronger plane to carry tons of water like this fire putting go out seaplane. It dives into the sea, scoops up lots and lots of seawater and then drops it on the fire. It can go where fire engines can't, like into the jungle or up to the tops of mountains. But luckily there aren't any fires today so the best thing we can do in the sea is skim across the tops of the waves in a super fast, super streamlined, supercharged speedboat. Wow. If you want to go under the sea, and why wouldn't you, then you need a submarine. It's very useful if you want to find your super fast, super streamlined, supercharged speedboat after it's sunk. There it is. Can there be anything anywhere more extraordinary to go down, down under the sea? Yes, you could go up, up, up into space. But first you had to fill the rocket up, up, up with full fuel. 23 tankers worth of fuel. And then you have to go up, up, up the steps. Lots of them. Which is hard work when you are wearing space suits and space boots. Oh. Can there be anything more extraordinary than to go oh, I that one? At last, we're at the top, ready to go. Ten, nine, eight, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off! Well, that was nice. The moon! But it's time to get back to laying all that railway track and maybe putting out a few mountain fires and not forgetting that we need to get all the seawater out of my super fast, super streamlined, supercharged, super soggy speedboat. Now, where on earth am I going to land? More coal fired, space exploring, jet powered hovercrafting facts from William B. Did you know steam engines can be used to power trains or trucks or ships or even machines that stand still and make things in factories? They can run on coal and water. The coal is used to make a fire which heats the water up and this creates steam which is piped into a cylinder and powers a piston which goes backwards and forwards and makes the wheels turn. Some of the steam escapes from the train's funnel. William B's moon rocket is mostly made up of this giant engine, three of them, and one great big fuel tank. It holds enough fuel to fill up to 15,000 cars, and most of this gets used up just in the first few minutes of takeoff to escape the Earth's gravity. So there we have steam engine, and below, space rocket. is how William B's vertical jump jet goes straight up. Instead of needing a long runway like most airplanes, it has four nozzles, two on each side, coloured yellow here, which turn so all the power from the engine is aimed downwards at takeoff. They then turn to face backwards and pull the plane forwards when the plane wants to land. The nozzles turn down again and the power is decreased. There you can see with the arrows. William B's jump jet uses engines to push it up in the air, and so does this hovercraft. Two engines at the back power the big fans underneath, the ones you can see in green, which push the air down, like the jump jet. But the skirts, which are pink, stop most of the air from escaping and allow the hovercraft to float on a cushion of air. It can float over the ground or water. The engine then moves forwards. Now you've learnt how different transport vehicles move. We can use those ideas in our work.